Okay, in this video we're going to be having a close look at envelopes and uh, what they do uh, with regard to synthesis um, to really help you get a solid understanding of uh, synthesizing bass lines. Uh, we're going to focus on exactly what an envelope does in quite minute detail. This should help you to visualize exactly what you're affecting when you're tweaking the various envelope parameters. Uh, I'm warning you that this video may get a little bit technical at times as it travels quite deep into nerdy territory. But uh, do stay with it because the point is not to get technical just for its own sake, but to uh, help you to visualise uh, what you're doing and to bring the complete clarity that you need to have in order to be able to get some kind of mastery over the uh, creation of your own bass sounds. So, envelopes. What are they then? Well, have a look at the first uh, illustration. That's a, a typical ADSR envelope, what's known as an ADSR envelope. ADSR stands for Attack, Decay, Sustain, Release. Uh, the attack portion is a, a time value. When you tweak it on the knob, uh, it's a time value. So it's the amount of time it takes to get from zero up to the, the uh, top value, at which point the decay will kick in. And there's also a time value that determines how long it will take to travel down to the sustain level. It is the only one of the four that's a time. <laughs> it's the only one of the four that's not a time parameter. It's a level parameter. So where you see S is how loud the signal will sustain at while you've got the key held down. And lastly, the release is a time parameter, which uh, is the amount of time it takes for the signal to fall to zero after you've let go of the key. OK, so there are the four stages, basic stuff. When it comes to uh, making bass lines, we're going to uh, pretty much disregard the attack portion of the envelope. So we're just going to have an envelope that looks like this. Now, uh, because we're going to start having no attack means that the as soon as you press the key down, it will be at full volume. The only three parameters that we're going to be using when we're making side trance bass lines are the decay, the sustain and the release, as you can see. And of those three, the decay is critical. Now, when you see a waveform represented in a audio editor or in software, or in a sampler. It doesn't look anything like that. So uh, in order to help you relate what you're doing, um, how you're shaping the sound, I've made this illustration. And the reason that it doesn't relate to it is because uh, when you look on a sequencer or, or in an audio editor, a waveform is, is actually bipolar. Uh, in other words, it goes up above zero and then down below zero, then up the other side. Uh, and when you look at this traditional illustration of an envelope, it's unipolar. In other words, it has a bottom line and it goes up and then down back to it. So to give you a more accurate picture, check that out. That is now a bipolar representation of an envelope, which looks a lot more like this which is a, uh, a waveform of a clap. Notice that kind of waveform is typical of a percussive sound with a huge transient and then tailing quickly off to a very a, a much lower level sustain, a burst of sound. This is a photo of the waveform of a Psytrance bass line. It shouldn't necessarily look exactly the same as that. There's quite a lot of variation, but you can see the basic uh, uh, percussiveness of the bass notes. It's in stereo, that's why there's uh, two lots of waveforms, one above the other. Here you can see it zoomed in. I've drawn in, uh, connected the tips of the waveform, so you can see it, it, it's, it was made with a pretty much exponential curved envelope. In a different video I mentioned uh, the differences between a linear envelope and a exponential envelope. Well, this is a picture of a linear envelope, a representation of it. And this is a representation of an exponential envelope. You can see that the curves are completely different. This kind of envelope is much better at 
producing percussive sounds. And which brings us back to the point, because the uh, percussive kind of sound is what you want for a side trance bass sound. Uh, you need a nice, strong attack, s- a short pulse of uh, bass energy, and the exponential uh, curve on the decay is is a good way to achieve that. So your bass sound should be a, a short pulse of sound, looking something like this. Or perhaps, probably something like this. Now, I do want to emphasise that, that this is just a guide, and this is only to help you visualise what you're doing when you're tweaking the decay knob and the sustain knob and the release knob, because I definitely don't recommend that you look to see what your sound sounds like. You need to listen. It's really important. You need to listen to see what your sound sounds like, because a lot of people make the mistake of getting into spectrum analyzers and trying to figure out whether they've got the right sound by looking at the waveform. Not a good idea. Music is a listening art. You need to hear it. This is, as I said, this is only to help you visualize what you're doing. Okay, so that brings us to the end of that trip through the nerdy world of envelopes. We should be getting to apply this stuff in an upcoming video.